I applied for the green card lottery and won two times. I helped my brother, I guided him through the process and he applied for the green card lottery and he won. After that, four of my friends that I personally advised on what they needed to do before application ended up winning the green card lottery. So today what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna review how to apply again. I'm gonna go over the application again. Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've not subscribed to my channel, I'm gonna go ahead and encourage you to subscribe. And if you've already subscribed to my channel, I just wanna say thank you for subscribing to my channel and thank you for watching my videos. I really appreciate your continued support. I applied for the green card lottery and won two times. I helped my brother, I guided him through the process and he applied for the green card lottery and he won. After that, four of my friends that I personally advised on what they needed to do before application ended up winning the green card lottery. And as a result, I'm sharing all the advice that I gave them in my videos. So if you want to know how to increase your chances of winning the green card lottery, please watch all my videos and when you apply for the green card lottery you'll have increased your chances of being selected as a dv lottery winner if this is your first time on this channel i encourage you to go back and watch all my videos about the dv lottery to get the full benefits of the requirements before you apply I did a video about the photo requirements, I did a video on the application, I did a video on how to use a photo tool to edit your photos. So make sure you go back and review all those videos and if you have questions, I encourage you to type your questions uh, under these videos in the comment section and I will respond to the questions to the best of my ability and if I don't know a response to a question I encourage anybody who's watching this video and who has advice maybe they're an immigration lawyer or through experience I encourage you to respond to those questions so that everybody has the necessary information they need before the application opens in October just to remind you when you're putting in your application make sure you're using the correct link if you have a problem finding a link to apply for the green card lottery, all the links will be under my videos. So all my videos have uh, the correct links if you have a problem finding the correct link. Number two, don't pay anybody to apply for you. You can do it yourself. So if you have a website um, advising you to create a profile and to pay a certain amount of money, just know you're being scammed. The green card lottery is free so don't pay anybody to apply for your green card so today because the application is opening um next week so i don't want to you know bother you with a lot of my rumbling at the beginning of the video answering questions we'll just go straight to the application and as you can see this on my screen right now uh, i have a sample from um, an application a while ago so i'm just gonna show it to you so that you can see how like what to expect um on your application like how it looks like i'm gonna make my screen a little bit bigger so it will look something like this so i'm just gonna scroll up so you'll be required to enter like you know some numbers and letters here just to verify that you're a human and not a robot um and then like you can see we have different parts so i'm just gonna show this to you and then i'm gonna jump on a sample where we will um complete the application together so you see the level of education uh the marital status number of children um that's like if you have any kids spouse information and all that so it will look something like this so usually when you enter like the number of kids this is the first page so when it asks you number of children so whatever you put in here you will click continue so when you click continue then it will bring you to this page here that we are looking at so i have a page already pulled up um where you can just like you know do a sample it looks a little bit different it doesn't have the blue color and the application form 
uh, will look like whatever I just showed you before with slight adjustments in there, if any. Okay, so we are looking at it and you see here there's a disclaimer right here. Okay, so here it just says um, it's a full copy of the official DV lottery application form. You just use it for training. Uh, you will need to apply to the official website, which is uh, dvlottery.state.gov, when it opens to take part in the lottery. So they're just telling you this is not the application form. It's just for training purposes only. You can fill in capital letters or small letters, whatever you prefer, whatever works for you. Uh, I'll just do mine in capital. You can do capital or small letters. It doesn't matter. So our last name is Mwangi. And then we'll say the first name uh, is Lucy. And then our middle name will just say Nafula right here. So as you can see in the application, so if you don't have a first name, you click no first name. And if you don't have a middle name, you click no middle name. So don't put a name there if you don't have any. So if there's no boxes to check on the application, you can just leave it blank. But then if there's boxes that says no first name or no middle name, you can just check those boxes uh, to just say, and then um, as you can see, I'll do a demonstration here when I do no first name this box is highlighted so even if i click on it i can't put anything there so that's the purpose is like if you check the box it highlights this so that you can't put anything there but then if you have um your first name which is lucy we'll go ahead and just put the name there okay the next is gonna be gender so for the gender you're either male or you're female. So you either click the male if you're male. If you're female, it's female. So assuming Lucy is a woman, we'll just do female. Okay. And then just as something real quick that I forgot to mention. So if you have like two middle names or two last names, uh, you can try putting both of them together. Either if they're hyphenated, try putting a hyphen there. Uh, if not, try putting a space there. If it doesn't let you, you can just put them together. That's that's my um, recommendation. Like if you have uh, two middle names, you can just put them in the same box. Okay. So with the gender, Lucy is a female. So we'll do female. And then the month, I will say they were born in August 3rd. 1995 so we'll just say Lucy is a female born in August the 3rd 1995 and I had a question about the order of uh, the day and month it doesn't matter so you see here it tells you month so if it's a month make sure you're putting a month here no date so regardless of what you do in your country like maybe if your country starts with the day and then the month and the year or it starts with uh, the month, the day, and the year. It doesn't matter. Make sure you're reading up here. Like if it says month, you put the month. Day, you put the day. Year, you put the year. Okay. And then a city where you were born. If you are born in Nairobi, Nairobi is a non-city. So you will put Nairobi here. If you are born in a place that's not in a city, it's important that you don't put something here that's not a city. So if it's a province, you see it says right here, do not enter the district, do not enter the county, do not enter the province, or do not enter the state. So it has to be a city. A place where you were born is not a city. Maybe Kangundo, Machakos, whatever, is not a city. So if it's not a city, don't put it here. There's a box here that says, birth city unknown so you're gonna click on that and see what happens again just like our name if you say birth city unknown it's not gonna let you put anything here but then because our birth city is none we're assuming maybe lucy was born in nairobi i'm gonna use like a city that's a uh, very um known so we'll just do nairobi there but then remember again 
If you are born in a place like Bungoma, which is not a city, click on this box here, birth, city, unknown, and then it, it won't let you put anything in there. Okay, so we'll assume that Lucy was born in Nairobi. So let's go ahead and put Nairobi there. And then here, country where you were born. You can be claiming eligibility from a country where you were not born. That's why this question is important. So assuming Nairobi is in Kenya, which it is, and Lucy was born in Kenya, so country where you were born, there's this drop down menu here, and then you just have to go to Kenya, which is K, they're in alphabetical order. So you just go all the way to Kenya and then you click that. And then it will bring you to so Nairobi, Kenya. Country of eligibility for the DV program. So this one is asking you where you're claiming eligibility from. This application form here ha is like an old one which required the passport. Um, I heard like this year there's no passport requirement. So this part will not be in the application. Hopefully, crossing our fingers, it will not be. But if it is, then I'm just going to go over how to fill out this part, just in case it is, but it's not going to be as far as I know. So you'll just put the last name on your passport, the first name, middle name. Again, if you don't have any of those, you just click, you know, now. And then you put your passport number and then the expiration date um, and then the country where you obtain the passport. And then... Um, some people uh, are required not to, you know, submit the passport information. There's some people, I guess, uh, who are like refugees or they don't have a country, you know, they don't have a passport. So some people, they have exceptions or, you know, some people are unable to obtain a passport because of the waiver or for different reasons. They can click this, which will click because we don't want to fill out all this. So next we'll look at the mailing address. So with the mailing address, we, already, we assume that, you know, you already uploaded your picture. So with the mailing address, it has different section here. So if you see in care of, it means like somebody is in charge of collecting your mail or picking up your mail. So for example, you didn't have like a mailing address and then you decide to use your church as a mailing address or to use your school as a mailing address, you can put it here. So like here, like if you're going to, you know, SDA in care of SDA church so this in care of it means like you're not receiving the mail like if you have a friend and you use their address you can put their name here so it means like you will not be the one receiving the mail but then if you'll be the one receiving the mail then you can leave this section uh, blank and then over here address line one so our applicant Lucy lives in Nairobi so we're gonna use the PO box address so you can say P O you know, oh, box um, 721. So that's the PO box address. And then address two is optional. Uh, the city is Nairobi. But then if they, they live in a different town. So here, like if you live in Nakuru, you live in Bungoma, you live in whatever you live at, Machakos, you can put here. So here you can put Nairobi. And then with the district, uh, what district, what province, what state um, is whatever your PO box is at. Like, for example, this one is easy because it's going to be Nairobi uh, because Nairobi is a province. So if you have like a district or a county or a state, um, Nyanza is a province, so you can put uh, province Nyanza, um, stuff like that. So... Um, you put your city here or a town and then you put your province here. The reason why mine is Nairobi and Nairobi is because Nairobi is a city and then at the same time uh, is the name of a province. But put your address the way uh, it appears on your letter. Like if you receive a letter, that's the address you're going to put here. Okay, so let's do the zip code. So with the zip code, not every place has a zip code you leave does not have a postal address or a postal code you don't need to enter here and don't enter like you know uh, plus one plus two five four plus two four three that's a phone 
um, like if you want to make a call, but then it doesn't apply here. That's not the same code. So if you don't have a code, just select no postal code here. So when you uh, select this, this is gonna um, highlight again, so you can't put, it won't allow you to put anything there. But then because Nairobi has a postal code, we'll enter it here. And Nairobi, I think is 00100. Um, so I think when I lived in Nairobi, that's, that was the postal code. So I'm assuming it's still the same. So look at the way we filled here. So this one, if somebody else or a church or a school or somebody else will be in charge of um, getting the mail for you, you put in care of the person or the institution. Address one is PO box. And then um, the city where you live at, the district, the county, the province, the state. And then the last one, you put the postal, the postal code. So it's important that you put this information accurately. So if you're not sure, you can check, like if you receive a letter, like if somebody sends you a letter, what do they put there? And if you're unsure, you can actually go to the closest um, post office uh, to where you live and then you can ask them, okay, what's the city? Like they can give you all this information and you can put it, you can prepare or get the information before filling the application. And then, okay, so the country will do Kenya because, you know, Lucy lives in Kenya. So we're going to do go all the way to Kenya. So I'm going to review the address for Lucy. So we put a PO box address. We put the city and I say, like, if you live in Machakos, you can put Machakos here. You know what province it is, the state, a county, a district. You can put all that here. And then the postal code is the code um of the post office there but not all countries or not all areas have the postal code the zip code like if you live in the united states they use zip code so you can use the zip code um if you don't have any of that then you click no postal code and then like i said before if you know that you're going to click this box, don't put anything here because otherwise it messes up the application. This one will stay here and it will stay highlighted. So just click this and make sure this box is blank. Okay, so let's go to the country where you live today. So Lucy lives in Kenya. So we're going to do Kenya right there. Okay, let's do one more uh, mailing address that's a little bit different from Nairobi so that you guys can see um, the variation. Again, if it's a care of, you know what to do there. So for here, we'll just do P. -O. So we'll just put in the address P.O. Box 755. So we'll do a city. We can do Siaya. So this usually is in... Um, the Nyanza province so here you just do Nyanza and then Nyanza has a postal code so which is 040 I think 600 so this you can actually google if you're not sure like I said you can either go to uh, the nearest post office and then just ask them the details of this or you can google the uh, postal code of whatever you leave. So this is Nyanza. And then the country here again will go to Kenya. And then a country where you live today, it can be Kenya or any other country. And then again here you'll put in the phone number. So you can see how different this is. So this is a province in Kenya. This is a province in Nyanza, Kenya. His name, like uh, it's known as Siaya. So, PO Box 755, I just made up a PO Box address. Uh, the city or the town, you're gonna say Siaya. So, if it's Kisumu, you're gonna put your Kisumu here. And then Nyanza Province, and then you can just put um, whatever zip code is associated with this mailing address. And then don't forget to put the country.
Okay, so when it comes to the mailing address, I'm just going to do a quick review of um, an address of somebody who is in America. Um, so we'll just do like here, you can say 344 uh, Smith. So like here you can say 344 Smith Street and then the city you can say Liverpool um, the province or state you can say is in New York and then the postal code and zip code uh, you can just say 13090 and then if you want you can put that there and then the country you can see United States of America and the country where you live today then it will be the same United States of America so you can just say plus one three one five two eight seven whatever I'm just making up a number it's not a real number so in care of you don't have to put anything there you're the one who's gonna be receiving the mail so you don't need to put anything there so here address you have to put like uh, the name of the street because usually in America it's not like um, a lot of people receive mail at their houses like at their home so you don't have to have a PO box address but some people have a home address and still have a PO box address so if your address is a home address and that's where you gonna be receiving the mail or that's where you live like maybe if you're a student um, and you have to apply you can use the address uh, of the school so you just have to put the street you have to put the city and then you have to put the province or state or whatever district and then uh, you have to put the postal code or the zip code and then you have to list the country where you live and then um, the country where you receive the mail so some people like maybe um, they want to receive the mail in the United States maybe they're visiting Kenya for like nine months so currently they live in Kenya but then they want their mail to go to the United States address that's where their permanent address is then they can say country where you live today you can put Kenya here but then you want to receive the mail in the United States so you can put the mailing address here so you can be like um, you know your mailing address and the country where you live today can be different you can be temporarily living somewhere for like a year but then literally your permanent address or where you want to receive your mail maybe next year is in Kenya or in whatever country Uganda you can put the mailing address um, there so your mailing address and the address where you live today can be different <laughs> and then what's the phone number it says optional but then I like to put something there so uh, we'll do five four seven two two so that's Lucy's phone number I'm just making up numbers so uh, um so this is a uh the code for kenya and then this is like a cell phone or a phone number in kenya so seven two two five six seven eight nine eight so put a phone number there and then the next thing is the email address so our email address we've just said uh lucy nakesa gmail.com uh that's the email address and then with the email address just make sure like if you open it uh, at the cyber like if you're filling this form at the cyber cafe and they open this email for you try to log into the email with that password make sure like it works so the email address is in so what is the level of education you've achieved as of today so if you're gonna select primary high school no degree or um, these two up here for the level of education you have to make sure 
that you have a high school degree. If you don't have a high school degree, then make, make sure you have like, you know, you can use like uh, work experience for at least, you know, you have like two years work experience. So here, highest level of education. This question is a lot of, it's confusing to a lot of people. Why? Because it says high school degree. Because, you know, uh, here to graduate high school, they will classify that as high school degree. So in countries like Kenya, after you complete high school, you get like, you know, a certificate or maybe you get a diploma or you get whatever you get in high school. As long as you completed high school, it's going to be classified as high school degree. So if you went to high school and you finished your high school and received a certificate, you have to select high school degree. If you went to like, you know, uh, after high school, you went to college and then maybe you, you graduated with your diploma because when you come to America, though, and you decide to take um, a university degree, that diploma, you can get some credits towards your university degree. So if you got a diploma, like maybe you went to a college, it's not a degree, like, you know, you went to do like some courses um, or you graduated with a diploma. You want to select some university courses because whatever you took in college can qualify as credits towards your university degree. If you have a master's degree, you can put it here, uh, some doctorate level, uh, some, you know, um, the doctorate degree. So if you have a PhD, so it will allow you just pick one depending on whatever highest level of education is. Like if you have a PhD, a master's, and a bachelor's, the PhD is higher. So you're going to select the doctorate. Okay. So if you have a high school and you have a university degree, the university is going to be the highest. It's as, it asks you for the highest level of education, the highest. Don't select two. Some people are saying, okay, what do I select? I have all these uh, degrees. Select what's the highest. Okay. So we'll assume here we have like a master's degree. So we'll click Lucy has a master's degree. And then here, current marital status. I won the green card lottery, but how did I find out about the program? I found out about the program because somebody posted a link about it on Facebook. So literally I had a friend on Facebook and she posted about the green card lottery and then I applied and I won. So what am I trying to say here? So if you know that you have access to this information, it's important that you share with your family, your friends, and everybody else. Because even if they apply, it won't reduce your chances of winning. Everybody has an equal chance of getting selected. So even if you like send it to them and everybody applies, it won't reduce your chances of winning. Everybody has an equal chance of getting selected. So I'm just gonna go over real quick on how you can share my videos with your friends and family. And you just go here, like if you see now, I'm using my phone to watch uh, my video, which is playing in the background. So what are you going to do? You see down here, it says share. So you're going to click on the share. And then once you click on it, it brings you this thing here that says copy the link. And then, so you're going to go ahead and click copy the link and then your link is copied and then after that's done you're gonna go like to your Facebook you can either X out of that go to your Facebook and then create a post and then once you create a post you can just create and say hashtag apply DV lottery just like that and then you're gonna click enter and hold on to your screen and paste the link and make sure like you know up here you select public so that all your friends and people who are not your friends can still um, see the information and then after that's done then you just click the post right here so you just click post you're gonna see the link right here so for anybody who, you know, they don't know how to find the information once they click the videos, 
they will just you know learn about the green card lottery and apply and the reason why Nigeria is not eligible for the program is because a lot of Nigerians are in America and you know why Ameri Nigerians are in America because they like each other they share information when somebody knows, finds out how to get a scholarship, finds out how to get a green card, they go back home and they tell everybody. So the reason why they're successful is because they share information, which some of us, somebody gets information and they don't want to share with their, with their neighbors, they don't want to share with anybody. But sharing is caring. Sharing won't reduce your chances of winning. So make sure you either share on your Facebook. Another alternative, you can go to Twitter. And then you go to Twitter. And then you again, you just create a post. And then you say you can post the link you just copied. And then you can say hashtag whatever country you want. You can do Kenya. I can do Congo if I wanted to. And then you just tweet. And that tweet gets to a lot of people. So in other words, what I'm trying to say, if you get something that can help your neighbor, having helping your neighbor is not going to reduce your chances of winning or in, reduce your chances of getting successful. Normalize sharing information with your friends and family. Thanks for watching.